You look good, It's a cross made out of hearts. Yeah. 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 When the Lord was on the
to move further away because this is where everyone's going to come in from the other side. They're not going out. He's not going outside. But uh, we need to...
Just go a few feet further on. No In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his Passion and Resurrection, for it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may also have a share in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at the door out in the open street, and they untied it. And those who stood there said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and threw their garments on it, and he sat upon it. And many spread their garments on the road, and others spread leafy branches, which they had cut from the fields. And those who went before, and those who followed, cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming. Hosanna! in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace.
would you like to gather at the front and move off to children's liturgy? <coughs> Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who was an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by the insults. So too I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All say the responsorial psalm together. All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him if this is his prayer. Many dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, Israel's son. Second reading is a reading of, from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave, and became as men are, and being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld, should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Stand for the gospel acclamation. <laughs> Read. 
reading of the Passion, uh, just to say that if you uh, feel the need to sit down throughout the whole of the Passion, or at any time during it, then don't hesitate. Please don't try and stand up if it's going to be a strain for you. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by some trick and have him put to death. For they said, It was not during the Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. He was at dinner when a woman came in with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, ointment, pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the ointment on his head. Some who were there said to one another indignantly, Why this waste ointment? Why should this could have been sold for three hundred hours and the money given to the And they were angry with her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why are you upsetting her? What she has done for me is one of the good works. You have the poor with you always, and you can be kind to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what was in her power to do. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. I tell you solemnly, wherever throughout all the world the good news is proclaimed, what she has done will be told also in remembrance of her. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, approached the chief priests with an offer to hand Jesus over to them. They were delighted to hear it and promised to give him money, and he looked for a way of betraying him when the opportunity should occur. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to him, So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city and you will meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him and say to the owner of the house which he enters, The master says, Where is my dining room in which I can eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room furnished with couches, all prepared. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, he arrived with the twelve and while they were at table eating, Jesus said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is about to betray me, one of you eating with me. They were distressed and asked him, one after another, Not I, surely. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping into the same dish with me. Yes, the Son of Man is going to his fate, as the Scriptures say he will. But alas for that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Better for that man if he had never been born. And as they were eating, he took some bread, and when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had returned thanks, he gave it to them, and all drank from it, and he said to them, This is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for many. I tell you solemnly, I shall not drink any more wine until the day I drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. After psalms had been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all lose faith, for the scripture says, I shall strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. However, after my resurrection, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said, Even if all lose faith, I will not. And Jesus said to them, I tell you solemnly this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, 
you will have disowned me three times. But he repeated still more earnestly, If I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And they all said the same. They came to a small estate called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Stay here while I pray. Then he took Peter and James and John with him, and a sudden fear came over him, and great distress. And he said to them, My soul is sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here and keep awake. And going on a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, this hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup away from me. But let it be as you, not I, would have it. He came back and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Had you not the strength to keep awake one hour, you should be awake and praying not to be put to the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came back and found them sleeping. Their eyes were so heavy and they could find no answer for him. He came back a third time and said to them, you can sleep on now and take your rest. It is all over. The hour has come. Now the Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us go. My betrayer is close at hand already. Even while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came up with a number of men armed with swords and clubs sent by the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the traitor had arranged a signal with them. He had said, The one I kiss, he is the man. Take him in charge, and see he is well guarded when you lead him away. So when the traitor came, he went straight up to Jesus and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The others seized him and took him in charge. Then one of the bystanders drew his sword and struck out at the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Then Jesus spoke. Am I a brigand that you had to set out to capture me with swords and clubs? I was among you teaching in the temple day after day and you never laid hands on me. But this is to fulfil the scriptures. And they all deserted him and ran away. A young man who followed him had nothing on but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the cloth in their hands and ran away naked. They led Jesus off to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes assembled there. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the high, high priest's palace, and was sitting with the attendants, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus on which they might pass the death sentence, but they could not find any. Several indeed brought false evidence against him, but their evidence was conflicting. Some stood up and submitted this false evidence against him. But even on this point, their evidence was conflicting. The high priest then stood up before the whole assembly and put this question to Jesus. Have you no answer to that? What is this evidence these men are bringing against you? But he was silent and made no answer at all. The high priest put a second question to him. Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. 
the high priest tore his robes and said, What need of witnesses have we now? You heard the blasphemy. What is your finding? And they all gave their verdict. He deserved to die. Some of them started spitting at him and, blindfolding him, began hitting him with their fists and shouting. And the attendants rained blows on him. While Peter was down below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's servant girls came up. She saw Peter warming himself there, stared at him and said, You too were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know. I do not understand what you are talking about. And he went out in the forecourt. The servant girl saw him and again started telling the bystanders, This fellow is one of them. But he again denied it. A little later, the bystanders themselves said to Peter, You are not going to show why you are Galilean. But he started calling curses on himself and swearing, I do not know the man you speak of. At that moment, the cock crew for the second time, and Peter recalled how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will have disowned me three times. And he burst into tears. First thing in the morning, the chief priests, together with the elders and scribes, in short, the whole Sanhedrin, had their plan ready. They had Jesus bound and took him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, It is you who say it. And the chief priests brought many accusations against him. Pilate questioned him again. Have you no reply at all? See how many accusations they are bringing against you. But to Pilate's amazement, Jesus made no further reply. At festival time, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone they asked for. Now, a man called Barabbas was then in prison with the rioters who had committed murder during the uprising. When the crowd went up and began to ask Pilate the customary favour, Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he real, realised it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. The chief priests, however, had incited the crowd to demand that he should, be, he should release Barabbas for them instead. Then Pilate spoke again. But in that case, what am I to do with the man that you call king of the Jews? They shouted back. <laughs> Pilate asked them. Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder. Crucify him. So Pilate, anxious to placate the crowd, released the rabbis for them and, having ordered Jesus to be scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away to the inner part of the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called the whole co cohort together. They dressed him up in purple, twisted some thorns into a crown, and put it on him, and they began, they began saluting him. Head of the King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed and spat on him, and they went down on their knees to do him homage. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the purple and dressed him in his own clothes. They led him out to crucify him. They enlisted a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he refused it. They crucified him and shared out his clothing, casting lots to decide what each should get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. 
the inscription given, giving the charge against him read, the king of the Jews, and they crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. And passers-by jeered at him, they shook their heads and said, the chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves in the same way they said, Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. When the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. This means, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood by heard this, they said, Some ran and soaked a sponge in vinegar and putting it on a reed, gave it him to drink, saying, Wait and see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The centurion who was standing in front of him had seen how he had died, and he said, In truth, this man was a son of God. There were some women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary who was the mother of James the Younger and Josset and Salome. These used to follow him and look after him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women there who had come up to Jerusalem with him. It was now evening, and since it was the preparation day, that is, the vigil of the Sabbath, there came Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who himself lived in the hope of seeking, seeing the kingdom of God. And he boldly went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate, astonished that he should have died so soon, summoned the centurion and inquired if he was already dead. Having been assured of this by the centurion, he granted the corpse to Joseph, who brought a shroud, took Jesus down from the cross, wrapped him in the shroud, and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of rock. He then rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary of Magdala and Mary the mother of Josset were watching and took note of where he was laid. If you'd like to sit down for just a few moments. One of the things that you notice today as you look around the church is that all the statues are covered with a purple cloth. <coughs> Even the, uh, you know, the, the cross on the crucifix on the top of the processional cross and all the little statues as well, of course, as the big crucifix above the high altar there. And the reason for that, of course, is that at this time, we mark how the glory of Jesus was concealed. Now was not the time for preaching his homilies or for working miracles. Actually, he did work one miracle 
just before he was actually arrested, he healed the servant's ear, uh, which had been cut off. Uh, it was Simon Peter that took a thrust with his sword. But after that, no miracles, no real preaching, although the words that he spoke, few though they were, were carried great weight and were very powerful. But this was very much Jesus the man. Now he was in captivity, he couldn't really do much, and of course for most of the time he was severely hampered by the fact that he'd been flogged within an inch of his life, a crown of thorns was roughly pressed onto his head, and he had to carry his own heavy cross to Calvary. And yet, it was on the cross that he was finally identified as the Son of God. Not by the Jews, not even verbally by any of his apostles, most of whom, apart from John, were not there. It was out of the mouth of the centurion, as we've just heard, who observed Jesus and how he died and said, in truth, this man was the Son of God. And that's because he saw how Jesus died, how Jesus carried this great load upon his back, not just, of course, the wood and the wounds that he bore, but as we know, all our sins, all our sins, carried humbly and with great love. No words of reproach came from his mouth for us, but rather those powerful words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And in silence and with great love and powerfully, Jesus died. He gave up his spirit on the cross. And looking at that, the Roman soldier proclaimed him the Son of God. It's amazing, really, isn't it? But it shows how powerful this was. As we know, it's the most powerful event in the whole of history when Jesus died on the cross and there overcame the power of sin to separate us. He would not separate himself from us. He embraced us on the cross and held on to us very tightly. And that love that poured out from his sacred heart won the day. And so we too should look at the cross, at Jesus there, and proclaim, yes, this is the Son of God, this is our Saviour. And thank him from the bottom of our hearts for the love that he poured out for us from his sacred heart. Because by his cross and his wounds, we are healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate as a Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. The Lord comes to his temple to cleanse and heal. 
So we approach the throne of mercy with our prayers of intercession. May Christians welcome Christ and follow him through Holy Week in his passion, death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for peace in the Middle East and the Ukraine, for refugees and exiles, and all who suffer persecution or injustice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the poor, the homeless, and all who are in a desperate need at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our children preparing their first Holy Communion, their families, and their catechists. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the sick and housebound, those in the hospital, the hospice, or in care homes, and those who look after them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the souls of all the faithful departed, that they may rest in the peace of Christ. We pray for those who have died recently and for all whose anniversaries occur at about this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask Mary, the mother of our Saviour, to pray with us and for us as we say, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, grace, the the Lord Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We pause to make our own prayers in silence. Almighty Father, forgive the sins of your people and make us ready to rejoice at the resurrection of Christ your Son. This we ask at all our prayers through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let the Lord accept sacrifice and joy for the praise and glory of his name, our good and good of all the Church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. <laughs> By the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he sent the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal.